Like this whole mask business is just like mind blowing. It came at a time in my life where I'm just like going through that identity, like peeling back the layers and stuff. One day, the staff and I were, were sitting around um, through the pandemic and, and really reflecting on some of the changes that, that we have seen um, with people dealing with isolation and everything like that. And it really became evident how big of an issue mental health has become worldwide. And being a public art gallery, um, our way of communicating is through visual arts, is through creativity. And so we wanted to create some kind of dialogue around mental health using the means of visual language. It was about over a year ago I stumbled upon Katie Green's artwork. She was doing a workshop at a gallery in Calgary and I saw the masks and the fact that she was working with humans and they became these murals and she was working with the community and I thought it was a perfect intersection of contemporary conceptual artwork but in a community-based um, aspect. I run the Cami LaFleur Clinic uh, under the Turning Points collaborative umbrella and Annette Sharkey from the Social Planning Council contacted me. She thought that we, since we work so closely together, she figured that um, we would have a lot of people that would be really interested in participating. We have a very artsy community, something I was very intrigued by, so I figured I could definitely find some artsy people who would be interested in getting weird. I think we don't have the opportunity to get weird often enough. So before even coming here, I was like a little, yeah, I was a little worried just thinking, okay, I'm, I'm a visitor here and, and what might that be like and um, what, that might, what might that feel like also for the group of participants to have someone coming in who, who is having a new experience of this place as well. But I mean, I feel like I've just been just so graciously welcomed and it's a pretty unique experience because I feel like I've been directly focusing so much on relationships and focusing so much on spending time with new people. Kind of like a therapeutic element to it, but also just something fun and creative, something that people could be playful with. And I think that these are not the kinds of opportunities that the folks that I work with get to um, have very often. Um, and so just the ability to offer that seemed really exciting to me. The process for making the masks is they all start with a small portrait painting. So I have brought 25 of these portrait paintings. And as you'll see, when they'll be laid out on this table over here, and there's gonna be so many different emotions when you look at that table. <laughs> there's gonna be so many different characters that will elicit different feelings inside of all of you. Um, and the process for picking your portrait, so your, your portrait will become the mask. I wanted to just sort of show you an example of like how that ends up looking. They're gonna all be laid out on the table and we can just walk around the table in silence and just go around a couple times. What you'll notice, there'll probably be a couple characters or maybe one character right away that will like really stick out to you. And I would just say, trust your intuition. Like if you have an impulse and you're feeling really drawn towards a character, just trust that. And then what we'll do from there is we'll just do some um, quiet kind of journaling and I'll go through the questions once we've picked our portrait. And that'll just be more like meeting this character and thinking about how it makes you feel and what kind of emotions are coming up when you, when you look at it. How does that sound? Cool. Yeah, okay. Uh, what does this painting say about you? And when you look at your painting, how does it make you feel? So what would this painting say to you if it could speak? If you could say something to this character, what would it be? What part of myself that feels internal and private can I express with this mask? Or can I express to the outer world? Or how do I want to be seen? Thank you so much for sharing, everyone. I know that that can feel sometimes vulnerable, so I really appreciate hearing those stories. Like I was saying, like this just like it brings me just like so much gratitude to share these portraits in this way. Um, because every time I paint them, I often will make them, and I'm like, what? What is that? What just came out of me? Or like, what? What emotion am I exploring? And some some characters really kind of shock me, while others make me feel really calm. Or 
you know, there's all these different emotions, so to see what, what each of you are experiencing when you look at the images is really fascinating to me. So thank you so much for your sharing. Tomorrow, what we'll do is we'll start building the mask forms. And what I'll do this evening is I'll be um, preparing prints of all of these uh, portraits. So what will happen is we'll build the um, cardboard forms. And some, some of us will finish that tomorrow, but we have Saturday and Sunday. So over those two days, we'll build the cardboard and then you'll have your prints of your image and we'll use paper mache. So you kind of tear apart your portrait and you rebuild it onto your mask using paper mache. So I'll have a bunch of these strips kind of cut out and there's no, again, there's like no right or wrong way to do it. You kind of build your frame and then you can just start weaving all of the pieces and we have a staple gun for that. We'll finish those by Sunday. It's really exciting and then, and then there's the whole photo shoot portion, which is so fun. Well, I knew where to go. I kind of had this setting already in my mind. That, that white stuff I got, they're big veils uh, from a, like a wedding gown. Um, I knew where the river was and I knew there was a, a spot where I could get above the river so we could get flowing water, so there was action, and I could, I could kind of show it off, right? I, I was thinking of more of a, you know, a, uh, like God sitting in his, in, on his boat. We're not barbarians anymore. That was the past, long gone. And it's cool to look back on it. Yeah, I had, I had a great time doing it, and the ladies were really lovely with it, and it was, it was just a fun time. I myself have uh, been into art since uh, grade five and it's been in my life for a while. Um, I lost it uh, well in my teenage years uh, due to drugs and alcohol and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I got retouched back into it through my wife. So I named my mass Junior just because uh, it just reminded me of myself when I was younger, happy and enjoying life, right? And doing art. Yeah, and art was uh, the happiest thing that I thought uh, was in my life. So, little junior. <laughs> I, I, I can't explain how fun it was, every process of it. People just don't think that, you know, that everything is just bad in this life style or whatever right there's always something and so when i got to do it i i just thought to myself hey, what, what can i do that would be fun interesting happy and enjoyable i i think i liked mine because it was very plain and and like kind of like surprise looking almost and blue one of my favorite colors the mask kind of morphed into part of who we are when we did our write-ups, at first it was about the character, but slowly but surely you could notice that there was characteristics of the person who did it. And that's huge because we don't really explore ourselves very often and not in a positive way anyway. And this was really good for us. I want people to remember that the world is always in a constant state of scary. You know, it's always in a constant state, constantly. And you don't know how long you have here. So you better be good to people while you're here because that's all you really got. And if you're not good to them, then they're not gonna be good to you. <laughs> and even if they're not good to you, who do you wanna be? I know who I wanna be. <laughs> and I don't wanna be that person that hurt, hurts people or exploits people or even some kind of unity would be nice. Behind the mask, I really enjoyed it. I liked, I really liked and loved the artist's pictures. And then when we got to choose, I was so excited. I was like, oh, I hope no one chooses the one I want because she kind of was showing us. And I was like, oh, I like that one. No, I like that one. But I chose this, the one I chose, I really, really loved. It was blue, like ice. And my name was called Mrs. Ostromatastic. And that kind of sounds like cold or cool. So I love that. 
Uh, we were, I thought we were all having fun and everyone's giggling, laughing, and we're like all trying to figure out where this piece is, like how are we gonna put this on? And like, we didn't wanna mess up. But you can never mess up in art. Art is art, then there's no mess ups. That's one thing my husband taught me. It's like, art is not perfect. I hope people learn that everybody has a mask. Everyone has several masks and it all depends on the person and who they're talking to or, or are they themselves. Get to know us. We're not all mean people. We're not rude. Mrs. Awesome Rotastic would like you to know that we are not monsters, we are human beings with hearts and feelings. She, she knew that I did um, carved and did prints and that, right? Like my native art stuff I do, right? So she asked me if I would like to be involved and I said, for sure. And uh, it was with a whole bunch of people that were from my building too, who it was nice to get on a personal level and get to know through this program too, right? It was, that part of it was really good, the bonding with the people, right? From the first day of doing it, I was looking forward to coming back. I didn't know how it would be, but I was really looking forward to coming back each day to do the next step, eh? So, well, most of them are about people's struggles, right? And what they've gone through in their life, right? And mine is about myself in my addiction, right? And all the troubles and everything that happened to me there, right? The before and after, I guess, is what I think people need to see and look at, right? It actually looked like a friend of mine in the building that named Kevin, so that's why I used that name, but it, look, it just looked like a sad person that was kind of withdrawn and everything, and that's what it reminded me of, right? For me, it, it's hard to meet new people and, and get to know them in that, right? So, and even these people that were, live in my building, right? I got to know them so much better by doing this and having one-on-one -on -one time with them. So for me, that was very rewarding, right? And Sarah, of course, and Katie too, right? So, and you, you guys too, right? Yeah, so I really enjoyed that. And it was really great to be able to connect with others doing something so personal, right? So this was really good. I mean, the experience was such that I am now certain of who I am. I didn't think it was gonna be this deep. Lately, I've been just trying to live by going with the flow being open to being open, being transparent with others. And it's, yeah, it's been quite the journey the last few years. <laughs> I think it's amazing. I think it's amazing. People need to see more that um, we can come out of our shells and we can heal. And we do have the ability to love and be, care, be kind towards others always. It's a choice. To, it's a choice to want to connect with others, right? And you don't, you don't gotta sit alone. Yeah, I've, done a lot of work in my um, inner work and stuff and I've been sober now for a while and um, I just want to keep healing you know I just want to keep um, and learning to love and myself and a hundred percent when I seen this one I thought oh my gosh this feels like an enlightened version of me like a like I was haunted by it I was like that reminds me of who my higher self would be yes amazing experience. I think it was a really beautiful healthy mix of people who found it as a really healing process and um, a process that just really helped them kind of dig into who they are and how they want to express themselves and how they wanted the community to see them. But then there was also just some participants who just had a lot of fun just playing and being creative and doing something that's totally outside of their normal day-to-day -day routine and having that actual that freedom to just play. The, the participants that were in this project are not people that get celebrated very often. Um, a lot of times the folks that I work with get kind of dismissed in our society. And so for me, I was just really excited to have them be a group of celebrated people. That was my wish. People I know are gonna love it because it is such a weird, uncanny, will catch you off guard, make you want to know more about the artwork 
find out the stories behind the participants and why they are wearing this mask and in this position and what they were thinking and what Katie was thinking. So I think it's gonna be well received, but I also know that with public art, sometimes people don't like it and that's just the way it is. You can't really make art that pleases everybody. So uh, I hope that at the end of the day that when people see these murals and even if they don't like it or maybe they think it's a little scary or makes them feel uncomfortable or whatever the feelings that come up when they see these artworks that they'll still uh, find out a little bit more, ask these questions, why are they feeling the way they're feeling, what's making them react in this way and then hopefully scan that QR code or visit our website and learn more about the heart of the project and why the project came to be in the first place. And, and now the beautiful thing is, is we've been able to present it to all of these artists, um, their images that are now going to be shared within the community. And it was so heartwarming to see the pride that they had in being able to contribute this work to their community. Um, it just, it was just a really, really special, special time to see them come in and really reflect on what they've been able to create and provide for their community. The best thing for me is like coming back to Vernon and being able to get a coffee with someone or being able to see them on the street and say hello and you, you know, you have the art and it almost becomes secondary and then you, you have the relationship and, and the container and the things that were built together during that time. And I feel like that becomes like the legacy of the project, you know, because who knows the murals might come down or like you know you don't know you don't know the lifespan of the artwork itself um, and that's that's becoming like more and more clear to me you, you know like in my art practice is yeah what is what does relationship building look like what is what does it look like to explore each other's stories together what does it look like then the mask portion of it too like being able to not only individually but with others like explore the multiplicity of selves that we all have inside and and what selves do we feel like we can show and what selves do we hide and and how does that character of the mask how does it allow for more aspects of us to be shown or how does it actually help us conceal what we what we want to keep inside even just for me, like going around in a circle and having that moment where you're being vulnerable and you're sharing something, it's, um, yeah, it just takes a lot to get to that moment. And I feel, I just feel so grateful to witness and be witnessed and to share that experience. Suppose I'd also just like to say how much of a pleasure it has been working with Katie and Kelsey and Donna from the art gallery. Katie has been just, she's just such a beautiful soul. She makes space and for, she makes space for everybody's feelings and needs in the workshops. And I think that is one of the things that made it such a fulfilling experience. It wasn't about her and her art. It wasn't about this opportunity that she's tr trying to give people. She really wanted the workshops to be a collaboration and also she wanted to thank the participants for their expertise in their art. Uh, it wasn't, there was no, you have to do, there was no, I want it this way. It was very much workshops that were for the participants. And I, having the opportunity to be part of something like that was really beautiful. Um, and again, just like celebrating, celebrating a really wonderful group of people. What an honor it was to work with uh, the participants that took part in this project. Uh, they're some of the most beautiful humans I've ever met and to see their personalities and get to know everybody better is just absolutely amazing and feel very lucky. Everybody was really keen to um, their own journey, like we all worked together but at the same time I could see how we all were um, processing, processing it and you know we shared bits of ourselves and it was nice um, but ultimately I think we all went through that like if I did I'm sure we all must have like um, being certain of who you are right or who you would aspire to be and it was about we're not who we are from where we came from we aren't our thoughts and uh, 
We all deserve connection and love.